In this video, I'm going to show you how you can nail any scale shape on the guitar, so stay tuned. Hey there, James here and welcome to episode 5 of the Ask James Guitar Show. Had a lot of questions recently about scales and I want to show you three really awesome ways to learn any new scale shape which will help them stick in your memory, help you learn them quickly and easily, and most importantly, will really help you when you come to actually use them to make music, which is the whole reason that we learn them anyway, you know, so that's coming in just a moment. First of all, one crucial, crucial thing you must learn anytime you learn a scale shape is which note in the scale pattern is the root note. Now, if you don't know what a root note is, let's just say it's the note that gives the scale its name. So if it's some kind of A scale, A minor pentatonic, A major pentatonic, or G minor pentatonic, G major pentatonic, G blues scale, the root note would be A in the A scales and G in the G scales. So it's the note that the scale begins on. Now when you learn a scale pattern, one of the notes in that pattern is going to be the root note and you must know which one it is, okay? It's totally totally important that you do that. A lot of people get stuck because they don't do that. So learn the root note. <coughs> Lecture over. Let's dive in now and have a look at these three really cool exercises and ways of learning a scale shape which will really help you. And to do this I'm going to use a really familiar scale shape because I think it's best if I demonstrate this with a scale shape that you probably already know so that you can just see how the exercises work rather than trying to remember the new scale. But Get a new scale that you don't know and try these exercises with it afterwards because you'll find they really work. So the one I've chosen to use just for this lesson is the A minor pentatonic scale. I'm going to play it at the fifth fret. If you don't know this, you can go through some of my essential scale videos on my YouTube page and learn this pattern. But let's just recap on the pattern just in case you haven't seen it or you just need to refresh your memory a little bit. So I'm going to play the E string at the fifth fret. Then I'm going to play the eighth fret on the E string. Then I'm going to play the A string at the 5th fret, the A string at the 7th fret, the D string at the 5th fret, and 7th fret, the G string at the 5th and 7th fret, and the B string at the 5th and 8th fret. On the top E, it's the 5th and 8th fret as well. So there's my scale pattern one more time. If you're totally new to that, maybe just skip back to my essential minor pentatonic video and you can just click this box here and that'll take you to that video and you can just learn that scale and come back to this lesson in a moment. So you know that scale pattern. Now here's what most guitar players do and here's what you don't just want to do. Most guitar players, myself included, learn a new scale, then they spend weeks just playing up and down it like this. Practicing my scales, I'm practicing my scales. Now there's a really big limitation with just practicing your scales like that. It's what most guitar players do, it's certainly what I did. The problem is, is that when we come to play a solo, we don't just play up and down the scale like that. So we need to practice the scale pattern in a way which will actually help us and be relevant to the way we're going to use them when we make music. And for me, this means breaking up the order of the notes so that we're not always playing them in the same sequence. So three really cool ways to learn your scale shapes in a way which is really going to help you. The first thing is you need to be able to see the notes on the guitar. Sometimes we think our fingers are just going to remember the pattern, but actually our eyes, certainly to start with, need to be able to visualize the notes on the pattern. So here's a really cool exercise for this. What we're going to do is put our fretting hand away for the minute. And let's just say we've learned that minor scale pattern, but we want to learn it a bit better. We're actually going to just press down with our right hand fingers and just tap the scale pattern out on the guitar neck. So it's not tapping as such, it's really just checking. When I'm not using my familiar hand, my left hand here, can I actually see the notes on the neck? In my pattern and you can just test yourself by just seeing if you can just press them out on the guitar neck. Exercise two is a really cool one which takes the emphasis away from this note. Now when we play up and down the scale we normally start on that note 
but we're not always going to start on that note when we come to improvise. So we're going to try starting the scale shape in the middle or just on any other note except that one. So I'm going to start on the G string at the fifth fret. I'm going to see if I can play up the scale to the top. And can I play down the scale to the bottom starting from that note? Let's try a different one. Can I start on the B string at the 8th fret and play to the top of the scale? Can I start on that note and play down? So what we're doing by, by practicing this exercise is we're getting ourselves out of this mental pattern that we start there and we go to the top. You, you might have had that feeling where you start the scale and you go don't remember it uh, and then you suddenly go ah yeah that's it you know you remember the sequence of notes starting from here but that isn't going to help you when you come to play we need to be able to find the scale starting on any note in the scale now I've saved the best exercise till last I call this one the random note exercise and it's such a cool way to learn a scale I've transformed people's um, playing with a certain scale shape in literally five minutes in guitar lessons before just by doing a few minutes of this. Give it a try because it really does work. Now like I've been saying we don't want to only be able to play the notes in the scale in the same order every time. So what better way than to practice playing them in a completely stupid and random order because if you can do this you'll be able to go from any note in the scale to any other note in the scale and back to any other note in the scale. You'll have a whole new level and depth of understanding of that scale pattern. So let me demonstrate how you do this. The first thing is we get a, a slow, steady beat. Now you don't have to use a metronome, you could if you want, but let's, but let's just say I'm just gonna establish a slow, steady beat here, like this, one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna play notes from my scale pattern in a completely random order, staying at that speed. It's really important we don't slow up and speed down because we might slow down on the difficult bits and speed up on the easy bits. Keep it sort of consistent and at a steady tempo. Then try doing this. Two, three, four. Now it doesn't sound like music. It's just an exercise. I'm playing totally random sequences and order of notes here. Now a lot of this stuff you probably wouldn't actually play in a guitar solo, admittedly. Uh, some of it would sound a bit non-musical, you know, although you probably will find some ideas that you like. You might start finding that you like some of those bigger jumps between the notes. But what's really cool about this is you start to get to the point with a scale shape where you can play any note in the scale shape and you can see any other note in that pattern. So you start to develop that ultimate flexibility within a scale shape. Again, this is such an effective and such a cool way to learn these scales and to get, get to uh, the point where you can actually use them and you'll come to improvise and you won't get lost anymore. And you won't play something unfamiliar and get, get lost. And you won't break up the order of the notes and get lost. So let me just demonstrate that one more time really quickly for you. So put in stupid jumps, big leaps between the notes. Slow it down if you need to. It's not about speed, it's about seeing those notes. So this speed is absolutely fine, that's what you need to do, or slower. Okay, that's about it, I hope you found that useful. So just to recap, we've got three exercises for learning a new scale. First of all, just play up and down the pattern a few times to get to know it. But then as soon as you roughly know the pattern, start trying these. So the first one, we tap out the notes on the scale pattern on the guitar neck using our picking hand. The second one, start the scale in the middle and play up to the top and then start in the middle and play back down to the bottom. And try doing that on any note in the scale, it will really help you get to know it much better. And the third exercise is the random note exercise, where we mix the notes up into a completely random order. Take it slow, keep it steady. It's more important that you can see the notes and find them than that you do this exercise fast. Do that with any new scale pattern that you're learning and you'll see massive results really, really quickly. 
So there you go. That's just about it for this episode. I really hope that you found that useful. If you did, please like the video, maybe leave a comment underneath and also leave a comment about any subjects you'd like me to cover in a future episode of the show. Now, if you're working on your scales, you can get a copy of my free essential scale guide by clicking the link under this video. It's got tab for six must know scale shapes. It shows you how to move them into other keys. It talks about the root note a little bit more in that book too and lots of other hacks and tips and just great advice for learning scales so if you want that you can click on the link underneath and you'll be sent a copy of that other than that i'll see you in the next episode when we'll be talking about another question sent by a viewer remember you can email me your questions at askjamesguitar at gmail.com askjamesguitar at gmail.com and i'll do my very best to answer it in the show so i'll see you next week for episode six Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you later. I just want to say a big thank you to these super cool guys, my Instagram followers here, who sent me the questions for today's show. I really hope it's been useful for you, and I really hope it's helped you out. Any other questions, you know what to do. Leave them on one of my Instagram posts, or leave them under this video. And everyone else, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Cheers, bye for now. <coughs>